Okay, so um, if you're on your iPad and you'd like to do this, what the first step is you have to place a FaceTime call because the share play takes place within FaceTime. So what I'm gonna do is place a FaceTime call to, to Anne. And I'm just gonna actually, I'll just do what I would normally do here. If I wanted to, I would just pull down and I would type FaceTime. I would tap it. Now I'm in FaceTime. And since we've rehearsed this, uh, her name is right at the top of the screen of, in terms of recent calls. So I'm gonna place this FaceTime call to her. Aha, okay. So can everybody see, well, you don't know my wife, but can you see somebody other than me? <laughs> yes. Okay, and can is. and can I just can I just say thanks so much for participating in this demo for our group. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Um, we have sort of worked through this a little bit. So Anne and I are in a FaceTime call right now, and it happens to be through the Zoom process, but that's incidental, of course. Anyway, so this is a normal FaceTime call. So if you want to go into screen uh, sharing or share play, and then um, what Anne's going to do is she's going to tap her screen and she'll, you know, and she'll share her screen. But before she does that, what I want to do is I want to show you the kind of thing that she's going to see on her end, because we won't be able to see that directly. So I'm going to tap my, my screen on my iPad. That's going to bring up some controls. Do you see those in the lower left? <laughs> yes. Okay, they'll go away in a minute, so I'll have to tap again. But anyway, there are the various controls at the bottom, which would be your, your camera, microphone, and so forth and so on. Right. The, the icon on the lower right, just below the end button, is the icon for share play. It looks like a chalkboard with a sort of silhouette head and shoulders uh, visible. Can you see that? That's the thing right under the end button. Right under, it's right under the red and yeah, the red end button. Now this requires Zach, uh, um, does this require 15.2? It requires at least, it, yeah, I think it's 15.2. It might've come out with one, but now, I think it might have been 15.1. Okay. But it, at least 15.1, as I recall, in order to do this on both, on both ends. So, so I'll, I'll show the control again. So that's the controls as I see them. But I'm not going to do this. I, I just wanted to show you that because Anne's going to see a similar control when I ask her to share her screen. What she will do when she sees this control is she'll tap that icon on the bottom right underneath the end button. And that will be the signal that she wants to share her screen. She will then have to, to confirm that on her end. And then the confirmation, she can describe what it looks like to you, but she'll have to confirm it. It just pops right up and she'll say okay to that. So Ian, if you would go ahead and, and share your screen and tell us what you're seeing there. Okay, so if I hit the share buddy icon, then it says share my screen. Clicking it again. Okay, now, thanks Ann. Now on my end, you can now see what I'm seeing, which looks bizarre, right? So Ann's picture has turned into just an icon for her with her initials. My picture remains, but then there's a third screen, a third image that appears and it's all blurred out. Apple probably has a name for that. I don't know what they would call it. What this means to me is that I'm seeing someone who's sharing their screen. However, there's really nothing to look at because we're, we haven't really gone anywhere. Anne is still in FaceTime and she's just indicated she wants to share her screen. 
So at this point, in order to cause something to happen, she needs to do something else. So on her iPad, her iPad has a home button. So I'll ask Ann at this point to simply press her home button and release it one time. She did that. Now we're looking at her home screen on her iPad. Can you see that? Yes. I'm going to tap. Right I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap her screen on my iPad, and that'll make it large. So now I'm looking at her iPad screen on my iPad through a FaceTime call. Make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Now notice in the lower right hand corner, I have a little icon with Anne's initials in it. That's just sort of a signal of who I'm sharing with, I guess. But on my iPad, I can move that. I can move it to any of the four corners. And that's useful because you might have that overlaying something that's on the screen that you need to see. So if I'm so, trying to find out what that icon is up in the upper left, I can just move this down on my iPad and get it out of the way. So Van, if, um, if, you, were share, if you were using SharePlay with several people, then their badges like that would line up on one side of the screen? I have never tried that, and I don't know how to do this with multiple people. I know you can do it like watch movies and that kind of stuff. It looks like that's the next thing for us to test. Eh? Well, that that would be fine. Some, yeah, I, <laughs> I again, I've only ever, you know, I've only ever used this because it's the use case that I love, and it's use case that I really have a need for, with helping someone on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I assume you'd see multiple uh, icons, Jonathan. Uh, Roy may know because I know he's done some movie watching with people, so that probably appeared for him. But anyway, so on my iPad, I can move this icon, I'll call it, anywhere I want to another corner. The other thing that I'll point out is when you're in share play, you can, or uh, screen sharing like this, I'm going to now take the icon and see how I'm moving it. Instead of taking it to a corner, I'm going to drag it off the screen to the right. Notice that it disappeared, but what appeared in its place is a little arrow. Can you see that on the right side of the screen? Yeah. Okay. That's the that's the visual indicator to me that that's where you know, I've stashed <laughs> the person I was helping with. So I moved Dan off. Anne's icon off the screen there. If I tap that arrow, it comes back. So that's just a way to keep the screen cleaner. So I drug it off. Now there's nothing else distracting us here. So at this point, we can do whatever we want. Anne can do whatever we want. I can give her instructions. So I can say, uh, Anne, look in the lower right-hand corner of your dock at the bottom right, tap that icon and go to your app library. And she'll do that. Then I can say, okay, press your home button once and release it. Okay, now we're gonna work in settings, Anne. So in your dock, toward the middle is the settings icon, the gear icon. Would you tap that please? Great. Everybody following along with what I'm asking her to do and watching her do it? Yes. Okay, I can't control her machine at all but I can see everything she's doing. And, mm -hmm. and that just makes a world of difference when you're trying to help somebody. Or if you're trying to get help yourself and you might need to share your screen with someone else so they can help you. So just, I mean, you can do, so at, at this point, this is pretty much the way it works. Um, you know, just to take it one level to show you one other thing. Let's take a look and see if Anne uh, who's usually pretty good about these things. Let's see if Ann has upgraded her software. By the way, there was a software update that came out, what, two days ago? Yes. 15.2.1. So let's, right. see if, let's see if Ann is up to date. So Ann, on the right side of your screen toward the top, you know how this works. You see software updates. So go ahead and tap that. Well, it turns out that Ann has upgraded and she's at 15.2.1. 
So now I can see exactly where she is on the screen. And I can say, Anne, on the right side of your screen, toward the top, you'll see an arrow in the word general. If you just tap that, we'll go back to the general settings. So at this point, um, we can, uh, all right, let's go back and just show you one other thing, just to show you on an app other than settings, for example. So Anne, if you would press and release your home button once, that'd be great. Now, if you tap, I notice you have the Washington Post app there uh, on your home screen and also in your dock. So if you tap one of those, that'd be great. Okay, so now we're looking at today's Washington Post print edition. And so uh, we could walk through this if we wanted to, we could be helping somebody, we could be reading an article together, we could do whatever we wanted. So the point is that the post here is just as an example. But you could go into any app. You could go into settings, mail, about anything you wanted to, to try to help somebody out if you were giving them assistance or if they were providing you with assistance, you could, they could see exactly where you were. And I don't know if any of you have this kind of use case, but I can't overstate how beneficial this has been in helping someone uh, try to diagnose an issue with respect to uh, you know something that's that we're trying to sort out and if you could do your you know press your home button once again and then go to settings again once you get back to your home screen that'd be great thank you now Jonathan I can demonstrate here what you were talking about earlier and on the left side of you know your left column, could you just pull down? That's what Jonathan was talking about. That's now revealed the search field on the left side of the screen at the top. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And if you type in that search field, just type um, control, control center. Okay, that's enough. So there she starts to type control center and the second item down is control center. So if she were to tap control center over there, that would take her right to the control center, which it just did. So if you, on the left side, now you can tap the X, you can cancel the search and you hit your home button again and you're back to your home screen. Did you want to show them the um, top of that screen while it's still visible? Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, actually just let's do one thing and thank you for suggesting that. Actually, let's do one thing before that. Just, just to show you it works either way. Uh, turn, if you could turn your iPad to portrait mode. So there you go. Works either way as you would expect. So now you can come back to uh, landscape. By the way, I have tested this. I don't use it routinely, but I have tested this and it works the same way if you're helping somebody on their iPhone. So I'm demoing it on an iPad, but it works the same way on a phone. Okay, what's interesting, and we just discovered this this morning when we were rehearsing, uh, if you're helping someone, notice the top of the screen. On the left, you have the time and the date, but on the right hand side, you have uh, some icons. The blue icon on the top right is the share play icon. So that indicates that Anne is sharing her screen. And actually the little dot next to it indicates that her camera is on the, with the orange dot. So if, if what we want to do now, and, and I'll just go ahead and do this unless anybody has any questions. If what Anne wants to do is actually stop sharing her screen, but still stay in the FaceTime call, what she would do is she would tap that, she would tap that blue button. So I'm gonna ask her to do that. When she does, it'll go away there. It just went away. It's no longer there on my screen. And tell us what you saw. So now I have the uh, little box with the 
FaceTime options. And if I hit the share option again, it turns that off. But then I also have to turn video back on. Okay, so she, so what, go ahead and turn video back on. there i had to bring her icon back in from the left margin because i had swiped her off the screen <laughs> so um, i had to do that and can i may i interrupt for just a second mary dodd did you have a question uh i'm wondering if this procedure can be done strictly on a laptop 